Welcome back to Round Tire Restoration, everybody. My name's Chris. Next to me here is the motor from a 1964 Triumph TR4 that I'm rebuilding. My last motor video, I mentioned that I was gonna move on to the frame and I have done that. However, I've got some problems here that I need to take care of. One, I'd like to thank Mike, a, a viewer of mine who pointed out that he thinks the distributor might still be messed up. The other thing that he picked up on was that I counted my firing order wrong and sure enough, I got my plug wires in messed up. So thanks Mike for pointing that out. Keep me honest, that's why I keep you guys around so I don't mess up stuff too bad. The other more significant problem is that the water pump here, the key in it is wide as compared to the keyway that is on the narrow belt water pulley. Essentially, I can't use this pump unless I modify the pump in some way or the key in some way or the pulley in some way. So instead, I, I did pick up a Lucas uprated water pump. They're probably gonna switch over to that and need to get it painted, but it'll be a pretty easy process here to swap those out and I'll get that installed and then figure out what, if anything, I'm gonna do with this pump here. So that's what we're gonna work on. Should be a relatively quick video. Hopefully I can get all that stuff fixed and then we'll get to the frame full time. So thanks for watching. Let's get it sorted. First thing I wanna do here is ver validate that I'm uh, on the compression stroke and all that kind of stuff. So I'm just gonna turn the motor like I did in the past, monitor the uh, intake and the exhaust and everything. So right now the intake is opening on the number one. So I have a feeling that I'm gonna be okay here with my, so now both are closed. All right, so that's at top dead center right now and the exhaust should open on the next go around. Right, both valves are closed right now, so the thing is exploding and running down. And the both valves are closed. And as I come around now, now I've got the exhaust valve opening. So that's good. So I ha I, I'm pretty confident that I've got that set up right and that uh, I've retained top dead center. Now I didn't do move the motor or anything like that. So that just validate that, that, I, that I did do that right. So that's a wonderful thing. So we're gonna put it back at top dead center just because motor's Putting a pretty good compression around. I got the plugs in and it's definitely harder to turn the motor over. All right, so there we go with top dead center again. So now I'll reset the plug wires. So we got the distributor here and the rotor's pointing at about top dead center, number one. So the rotor turns counterclockwise or anti-clockwise as the Brits say. And the firing order is one, three, four, two. So as I come around on the cap in that direction, obviously number one's gonna be about here three, four, and two. And I think what I did was one, three, two, four. This pin right here goes to the top wire. This pin down here goes to the bottom wire on that. Back around to this top wire goes to that pin, and this one goes to this pin. Well, in the, in the direction of rotation, the rotor's gonna be spinning like this in here, right? So you would turn it over 180 degrees. So that would be one. That needs to be three, four, and two, and the way that I have it wired is essentially, let me see, make sure I keep this straight here. I think I had it wired one, four, two, three, or something like that. So this went to one, that went to three. Yeah, and at one, three, two, four is what I had instead of one, three, four, two. So I'm just gonna swap the two and the four wires, and then we should be all set there. A little confusing, I know I probably didn't show you that close enough, but it's easier to see when you're in person. Just know that the rotor turns anti-clockwise and you gotta keep track of what wires are going to what posts inside the distributor itself or the, rotor, the distributor cap, and then it should be clear to you what's going on. So here's the distributor cap with the wires kind of just laid out a little bit. The confusing thing about this distributor cap and what threw me off is it's not like the standard post ones that are sticking up. It's not real clear what the rotation is here, though it should be. So one, three, four, two, and for whatever reason, I wired it up one, four, three, two. So this is park plug wire number one, that's correct. But then you notice here that the longest wire, which will go to four X, or excuse me, which should go to three now is actually going to four. Three, this next one, which be going to four is going to three, and then the two is right. So these two bottom wires I have swapped. So essentially all I need to do is loosen those posts up, swap them out, and then put them back in. Now, again, as I had mentioned, it pierces. There's little posts, the, the screws in there are piercing. So I need to recheck this to make sure that I've got good resistance or, or a short to make sure that now that I've pierced it the second time, I don't mess something up. 
but essentially again just these two need to be swapped so that I'm one three four two instead of one four three two. Oopsie. One, three, four, two. Much better. Thanks, Mike. Got three pulleys here. This one on the right is the one that came with the water pump and was attached to it. Center one is the aluminum narrow belt kit. And you can see how that's more of a normal width. And then this last one is what came with the new Lucas pump. And you can see that that's a little bit wider. If you look at the keyway on this one, hopefully you can see it. It's uh, at the top there, it's relatively narrow as compared to the keyway on that one. I think you can notice that difference looking on eyeballing it. The keyway on this one that came with the pump is the same as this. So this motor had been rebuilt at some point, whether or not this is not a TR4 water pump and it's a TR2 or a TR3, I don't know enough about the other motors to know if design changes happened or, or what along the way, but that's not gonna work. So there's the new Lu Lucas water pump with the five vane impeller instead of six, but that's okay. And it's uh, with the original sealed bearings, it's a sealed pump. There's no, um, there is a telltale drain on it, but there's no grease fitting because it doesn't need it. So we're gonna go ahead and get this taped off and get it painted in preparation for installation. Got the new water pump here all painted up ni nice and uh, ready to go. So we'll get this old and off, get the gasket uh, surfaces all cleaned up and then get a new gasket, which came with the new pump as well as the key and the bolt and the washer and all that kind of stuff. We'll get that guy on there and try to get the pulley on. Now the pulley fits pretty tight on the shaft of this one. The shaft is just a, just a tear bigger, but I don't think it's enough that uh, it won't slide on as I tighten the bolt. So real quick uh, work here. Hopefully it'll be a mess getting this gasket material off. Hopefully this will be the last time doing this because you know, there's no work like rework. Yeah, yeah, that's gonna be real fun to clean up. All right, I won't bore you with that cleanup. I'll come back when it's ready. Got the seating surfaces all cleaned up, new gasket on, and with the uh, aviation former gasket applied. Get that puppy on there, and get the bolts, and the two nuts, or the bolt, and the two nuts back in. All right, we'll go get the torque wrench, torque it down. I can't remember what it is off the top of my head, but we'll go ahead and torque that down. Water pump spins without any interference. If you remember the last time I had some interference problems, but it uh, looks good now. So we'll go ahead and get it installed. All right, 27 foot pounds. Pump still spins without any interference. Get the key lined up. And then the pulley. So I'm going to lubricate this a little bit because like I said, it's a little tight. And if I don't get it lined up and get it started and the key's not perfectly lined up, probably going to have issues there. Yeah. Looks like it's going. Yeah, I think I knocked. I don't know how, if you can hear that at all. I think I knocked the key out. All right, so I'm gonna keep trying this. Like I said, it's pretty tight. It's not sliding on real easily. So it's now it's just gonna probably just be a trial and error here to get this key lined up and get it to uh, stay in there. So we'll come back. So the pain continues here. The, uh, the key, does not fit in to the slot very tightly. So it's very, it moves around a lot. And every time so far that I have tried to put on the pulley, it pushes the key out of the way and the key falls. So I, I tried tape around the outside of the key, that didn't work just to kind of make it fatter, you know, so it'll fit in there tighter, but that, that didn't quite work. I tried grease just to provide some, some gluey, you know, friction, that didn't work. So now I'm gonna try the gasket cinch stuff here and just drop a little dop in there and then put the key in and let it sit and set up and see if that uh, that does it. So I don't, uh, obviously frustrating, but we'll see if I can't uh, get lucky with it. So this here is Loctite 638. 
It uh, is a retaining compound is what it's called. So what it's really designed for is on a rotational, uh, let me see if I can actually get the words here. Lock seal components prevent assembly from loosening wear and corrosion fills gaps and isolate air. So essentially what it does is would allow you to put a pulley on something without using the key at all. So it's supposed to be that strong. What I'm going to do with it is just glue the key in there to provide a little bit of support for it. So this is probably overkill for what I need. There's like a dozen of these, right? So I don't know what the hell I'm doing. So who knows if I have the right one, even if I wanted to, but it seems like this, these adhesives are pretty, pretty wicked cool. And I could probably just put the pulley on here, slap it on there and it would take care of it once it cured. But obviously it'd be a pain in the rear to get off. You got to heat it up to several hundred degrees probably to, to get the thing off and it's an aluminum pulley and I just, God forbid I have to ever get into that. So I don't want to deal with that. So I'm just going to put some of this stuff in there. I got the key, got it all cleaned up, got it all degreased, nice and dry and clean. I scuffed it up a little bit because it tells you to rough it up. It helps it absorb a little bit. This stuff is only for metal. You can't use it for wood or anything else. I picked it up at Amazon. I've never seen this stuff for sale before. I'd never even heard of it until, until now. So I'm going to go ahead, a little bit of it, put the glue in and then uh, put the key in and get a little, I get the, the cutest little C-clamp known to man, go ahead and clamp that guy and uh, give it for 24 hours or so at least. It's probably going to be more like 48 by the time I try it again. And then we'll try to get the pulley on and see what happens. So that's, uh, that's the plan. We'll see if it works. <laughs> All right, so getting ready to put this, uh, the magic glue on here. A couple concerns I have. Uh, one, I don't want to use too, too much because I don't want this stuff to ooze out all over the place. So it's, it's probably gonna, going to, at a certain extent, I'm hoping I can scrape it off or, or use a, a real, you know, a, a, a light metal razor blade or something to just get it off the stuff that oozes out. Two, I want to try to make sure the key is as flat as I can. So that way it's not sticking up too far in the front or too far in the back so that when I go to pull, put the pulley on, I, I don't have interference there. I don't think that's going to be a problem because uh, the pulley groove is, is relatively thick, but but I still would want you know an equal amount of connection between the key and the pulley keyway. So we're going to go ahead now. Like I said, I cleaned it all up, degreased it, all that kind of good stuff. So I'm going to take the key out and uh, put some of this green stuff in and then put it down and put a clamp on it and come back. All right, so it looks like I got lucky there and used right, right amount. All right, we'll lightly clamp it. And I want to put the C-clamp as close to the center of this thing as I can. All right, told you that was a cute little C-clamp. So now we'll let it set up. It is anaerobic, which means it needs the absence of oxygen to be able to start curing up. So all this stuff inside that groove now I expect to cure. I did get a little bit of oozing in the very back but nothing, uh, nothing significant and it mostly stayed in the back. So probably won't provide any interference whatsoever. So there you go. So they, like I said, they make a whole bunch of the different kind of things here and, and maybe this isn't the best one to use, but they all are essentially designed for the same stuff, just varying levels of oomphness and uh, drying times and things like that. So this one as best I could figure is pretty much right down the, the middle of the road. And I figured that would be good enough. So we'll uh, wait and put the pulley on, hopefully that'll go on smooth. And then there's not really anything I can do out after that other than crossing my fingers when I start this car up for the first time. And hopefully that pulley stays connected to the water pump. So it's been 48 hours or so. It requires a 24 hour cure on this stuff for the, uh, depends on the type of metal, but for just plain old steel like this, it's about a 24 hour cure. So now I'll try to fit the pulley uh, over everything, get that seated properly. And then hopefully the key here is, is going to stay put. I think it will. And we'll, uh, we'll see. The other concern too is the alignment between the, the crank pulley and, and this guy, right? They should be straight, straight in the same plane with each other. And then eventually when I get the alternator, that'll be another concern. So that's, that's about how far it's going without some persuasion. So got a hammer here and a block of wood. I would like to do something where I can I don't want to, because it's aluminum, I don't want to mar it. So I want to use wood here, but I, I'm going to have to knock it in offset and I don't really want to do that. So let me see if I can figure out something that I can fit over this so I can bang it and, and get it uh, flatter a little bit. As you can see, I got the pulley on. 
it's as seated as I think I'm going to get it based on where it lines up forward aft with the crank pulley. It looks like it can go in a good, you know, half an inch or so, but about a quarter of an inch, I'm going to start hitting the bolts that hold the water pump in. So obviously that's not a solution. So maybe those are offset more frustrating and, and painful than I thought this would be. But, you know, I'm trying to combine aftermarket parts with original stuff and everything. I did compare this pulley to the one that came off the car and they're dimensionally almost identical, at least close enough that, that I don't think it's a manufacturing defect or a design problem or anything like that. So I don't have the alternator ready to be hooked up. All the, all the hardware for that is just not, just not there. So when I get to that point, I'll do some comparisons again. I can't get this nylock nut any tighter now. The thread protrusion's not there, so I gotta come through that. But just like I said, generally frustrating and painful, but it is what it is. So if you've got any ideas or if that offset with the pulleys is, is what I would expect to see, uh, please leave a comment, let me know. But otherwise, that's, uh, that's going to do it for this video. So thanks for watching. Thanks for liking. Thanks for subscribing. And we'll see you guys soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers.